All right, we're all done with the kitchen cabinets. We've installed the units here on the center island and those that are along the partition wall. Now we can go ahead and move on with some other finishing touches in the rest of the cabin. Now we've been working on the railing here for the stairway in the loft. The log cabin manufacturer fabricated the stairway in Michigan, then provided these logs for us to assemble the railing. We've got one stretch of railing left here along the basement stairs. Now we've already attached the shoe rail to the newel post using dowels. And we put more dowels here in the shoe rail. And the spindles, which have been pre-drilled, just fit over the dowels. Ready for this? Yep. Yeah. Right. When those are in, we glue on the handrail, which we drilled to go over the dowels and the spindles. Now we move the assembly into place against the log stringer. We'll finish the last two spindles after securing it. We also plan on building a railing around the back porch here and the front entryway, but we're going to wait until spring to do that. One key to building a log structure is staining the logs to seal in their natural beauty and color. Now we've done most of it downstairs, but we do have a little bit left to go here upstairs. Now we've sanded all the logs already and brushed and vacuumed off all the dust that tends to accumulate on the logs. We also covered up this window here to protect that. Now if you don't want to spend hours shampooing your hair, it's a good idea to cover up your head. So we'll just start working from the top and just come right on down. We're using a low pressure garden sprayer to coat the logs. The exterior was stained with the same light natural shade last fall, but this is a different formula. The exterior stain has a fungicide and a mildicide, which will make it unsuitable for use inside. The exterior formula has ultraviolet inhibitors, which interior product does not. If your interior logs get a lot of direct sun, you can specify that the inhibitors be added to your stain. After spraying, we brush the stain in to eliminate runs and to really penetrate the wood. And along with the logs, we're also spraying the ceiling boards with the same stain to keep the color uniform. We finished staining the logs here in the great room a couple of days ago. And as you can see, the masons have finished our fieldstone fireplace. And they used rock collected from the site here. Now one concern was to separate the stones and the mortar from the logs to prevent binding as the logs settle. So, we can get a look back here. They nailed plywood to the logs through slotted nail holes and then attached the masonry to the plywood with brick ties. The slots will let the logs and the nails slide down freely as they settle while the masonry stands firm. And chinking will later finish off this edge. Finishing the window trim is another part of the project. The first step on each window is bringing the jam out even with the 2x8 bucks. Alright, now we've notched off the side of our logs here flush with the bucks. And our 1x4 trim gets nailed to the bucks and the extension jams. But again, not the logs. That could cause binding as the logs settle. We're not countersinking the nails since some of the trim may be taken off temporarily when the windows are chinked. On top, the trim covers the settling gap between the buck and the log, and we're leaving a quarter inch reveal on the extension right there. Right there. Now here's kind of an interesting treatment. We took this leftover log, custom cut it, and then slipped it over the end of the partition wall, kind of like a, a log trim. Now we're also going to be covering up the slip joints that we built into our partition walls to accommodate the log settling. We're securing the trim above the gap and not below. Now so the trim can slide down freely over the lower part of the wall as the log settle. Okay, well that takes care of that one. Now along with the trim work, we're also hanging the doors. Now we have these doors made using the same 1x6 pine that we use for our partition walls. And the hinges that you see on here are made out of black iron. It's the same type of hardware you'll see throughout our log cabin. 
We're also using black iron screws here to attach the bucks to the front of the door. The door jams go in the stud walls the usual way, but it's a little bit different on this log wall that encloses the master bedroom. For one thing, we installed a 2x6 buck to support the jam, and we left this gap up here to accommodate any log settling. Now we can just hang the door. upstairs on this antique white pine flooring, which will really add to the rustic style. Now, the wood's edge makes it very dry, so it's been airing out for over a week, acclimating to prevent problems after installation. This wood's unique because it's taken from old buildings and then milled into random with tongue and groove boards. We know this wood comes from a couple of 19th century barns, one from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and another one from Frederick County, Maryland. In fact, if you look at the back side of the boards here, you can still see the old paint. Evidently, this one was white at some point in time. We're using a rented floor nailer to secure the tongues of the boards. We've got rosin paper below to limit squeaking. To account for seasonal swelling, we've left gaps at the log walls that will later be chinked. Over the next few days, we're going to finish up the wood flooring in the bedrooms and the dining room and the great room. And we've got a mortar bed in place here in the kitchen for another unique material, terracotta squares. Now, these should be delivered over the next few days, about the same time as we get our granite countertop. And that's when the chinkers, who did the exterior, will come back and finish the inside of the logs. They'll cover up all these wires that Dan Perrin, our electrician, has finished running up from the basement. He also hooked up the sauna, so that's ready to go. And we've got heat in the house now that the furnace has been hooked up. Now this forced air model is powered off a propane tank that's buried outside. And we're keeping the basement heated to about 40 degrees all winter, even when we're not here. And that's so we won't have to drain the basement pipes every time we leave to keep them from freezing and bursting. We will drain the upstairs pipes, though. We'll be insulating heavily down here in the basement to conserve fuel. We'll be using fiberglass insulation between the ceiling joists and in the wall. We'll be installing this as soon as we get some of our junk cleaned up down here. And on the outside of the foundation, prior to backfilling, we installed this styrofoam insulation. So this way, when we go home and we shut all the heating vents upstairs, we'll still be able to heat the basement, but conserve fuel at the same time with all this insulation taken into consideration. Well, now we can move on to the plumbing fixtures. This is one of the last steps in the basement, installing the bath fixtures. We chose a traditional style for the tub, pedestal, sink, and the toilet, but they're not old-fashioned. The toilet is a water saver, only using one and a half gallons of flush. And the Whirlpool tub has controls that you can set to automatically fill at the depth, temperature, and time that you want. We've got several subcontractors coming in the next few days. So our plan is to finish all the plumbing fixtures today and most of the lighting fixtures and hardware tomorrow before the subs start coming. In our upper bath, we chose the same style toilet as in the basement. But here, the tub and vanity hardware is finished in brushed chrome with ceramic handles. For the vanity, we had a great idea. We thought, why not get an antique washstand cut a hole in the top of it, and then I get this out of here, place the sink right in the hole. Obviously we've got our sink, but because we've been pretty busy, we haven't been able to go antiquing. So I'll have to wait a while, but that's why it's nice having a couple extra bathrooms in the place. For the master bath, we chose new fixtures with antique styling. The Victorian tub is cast iron, or polished brass drain, faucet, and handle. The freestanding installation let us bring the plumbing through the floor and avoid cutting any logs. The tank for this old-fashioned pull-chain toilet gets attached to this wall here. And of course, we don't want to attach it directly to the logs because when they settle, they could crush the plumbing that goes underneath here. So instead, we notch this log into the wall and then we'll attach the tank to this plywood that we 
put up here. Okay, this way the logs can sell around it, and we don't have to worry about anything getting crushed. Okay, just a little bit more. Well, we wrapped up all of our plumbing fixtures yesterday, so we can start hanging our electrical fixtures today. Now, the electricians ran all the wiring when they did the electrical rocket, so we're all set to go. We chose fixtures of antique brass, handmade in Maine, with the look of old-fashioned lantern. In fact, the glass on this onion globe is a style that was popular in colonial New England. On the back porch, we put up a pair of teardrop-style lamps modeled after the street lights used in Brooklyn a hundred years ago. This cottage light will eventually be hung from our porch ceiling out here. Unfortunately, the electrician hasn't roughed it in, and we don't have our ceiling boards up anyway. And once we get our junk pile cleared out in front, we'll stick a post in the ground and attach this cape and light. We'll use this as an approach light. But again, that'll just be one of those projects we'll have to do later on. Uh, it's a little high up here, and we've had a bit of a challenge installing these ceiling fans in the vaulted area in the great room. Both fans have this rustic verdigris finish and pine blades, so they fit in here beautifully. And the electrician did a real nice job in hiding the wiring by running it along the top of the purlin, drilling down into the fan fixture. The fan will be controlled at ground level. They'll keep the cool air circulating in the summer, and in the winter, we'll reverse the direction of the blades to blow down and keep the warm air from rising into the vaulted ceiling. We're putting a third fixture up in the vault. This large onion globe lamp will light the stairway area. In the dining room, we're hanging a colonial tavern chandelier. And we're mounting colonial wall sconces in the hallway upstairs. We have all of our ceiling fans up. We can install some more hardware. The hooks back here are for our fireplace tools. Now, these are hand forged black iron. It's an early American style that we're using throughout the cabin. We had a few hours left in the day to work on the antique flooring in the great room and dining room. It's slow going, but we made some progress. 